Chapter 18 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar. Translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18. The forest literally trembled as it echoed the career of the Tabajara braves. The form of Irapuã the Great first looms amidst the trees. His suffused eye caught sight of the white warrior through a cloud of blood. A hoarse and tiger-like roar burst from his brawny chest. The Tabajara chief and his tribe were about to fall upon the fugitives like the swollen waves which break on the Mokoribi's flank. But hush! In the distance sounds the bark of the Indian dog. Pochi gave a cry of joy. It is Pochi's hound that guides the warriors of his Taba to save his brother. The hoarse seashell of the Pichiguaras bellowed through the forest. The great Jacauna, lord of the seashores, was marching from the river of the herons with the best of his braves. The Pichiguaras received the first assault of the foe on the jagged heads of their shafts, which they loosed in showers like the porcupine raising his quills. Presently resounded the war posema of the Tabajaras. The space between the enemies was narrowed, and the hand-to-hand -hand combat began. Jacauna attacked Irapuã. The horrible fight was that of ten braves, yet it did not exhaust the strength of the two great chiefs. When their tomahawks clashed, the battle trembled to the heart as one man. The brother of Iracema came straight to the stranger, who had taken the daughter of Araquen from the hospitable wigwam. The trail of vengeance led him. The sight of his sister maddened him. Kaubi, the brave, furiously assaults the enemy. Iracema remained by the side of her warrior and spouse. She saw Kaubi from afar and cried, Let the lord of Iracema listen to the prayer of his slave. Let him not shed the blood of the son of Araquen. If the warrior Kaubi must die, let it be by the hand of Iracema, not by his. Martin looked at the savage with eyes of horror. Would Iracema slay her brother? Iracema would see the blood of Kaubi stain her hand, rather than the hand of her lord, because the eyes of Iracema dwell upon him, and not upon herself. The battle still rages. Kaubi fights with fury. The Christian hardly defends himself, but the poisoned arrows from the young wife's bow save him from the blows of the enemy. Pochi had already laid low the old Anjira and all the braves who during the struggle had encountered his good tomahawk. Martin leaves to him the son of Araquen and seeks out Irapuã. Jacauna is a great chief. His war collar thrice encircles his neck. This Tabajara belongs to the white warrior. Revenge is the honor of warfare, and Jacauna loves the friend of Pochi. The great Pichiguara chief appraised his formidable tomahawk. The duel between Irapuã and Martin began. The Christian sword was shivered by the savage's tomahawk. The Tabajara chief advanced upon his unarmed adversary. Iracema hissed, like the boy Sininga, and threw herself between her warrior and the Tabajara. At once the massive weapon trembled in his powerful right hand, and his arm fell inanimate by his side. The posema of victory sounded. The Pichiguara warriors, headed by Jacauna and Pochi, swept the forest. The Tabajaras snatched, as they fled, their chief from the hatred and vengeance of the daughter of Araquen, who had the power of conquering him, as the Jandaya prostrates the tallest and strongest palm tree by nibbling the core. The eyes of Iracema, scanning the forest, saw the ground strewed with the bodies of her brethren, and in the distance the remnant of their war party flying in a black cloud of dust. That blood which stained the ground was the same brave blood now lit up her cheeks with shame. 
the grief drops moisten her beautiful cheek. Martin withdrew, that he might not embarrass her sorrow. He wished her naked woe to bathe itself in tear floods. End of chapter 18